We have a sprinkling of aurora from some fast wind from two coronal holes that have been rotating through the Earth strike zone this week. And we've got a couple of M flare players that have survived their backside passage across the sun. They're entering Earth view now, and boy, they're already angry. Those stories and more in the news this week. The space weather this week looks to be very promising. We have two coronal holes, one which is already in the Earth strike zone now. It's already sent us some fast wind, which is giving us kind of a sprinkling of aurora over the past 24 hours with a promise of more. On top of that, in the next four days, there's another coronal hole that will be rotating into the Earth strike zone, and it could be an even bigger source of aurora. So we're watching those closely, plus we have those, do you remember those M-Flare players that, that completely slammed us about two weeks ago? Well, they have uh, survived their backside passage around the sun, and they're showing back up here Earthside, and they are angry. They're already firing off solar storms. We may even see some M-Flares from these guys. So what we're worried about are, are radio blackouts, probably starting in the next day or two, and maybe even some solar storms as soon as they rotate into the Earth strike zone. Switching to our M-Flare threat meter, you can see we've been very quiet for a couple weeks now. We've been well below the seafloor until about April 15th when we started to see the glow from those regions that are on the backside. It started ramping up in the X-ray levels until about the April 15th when we actually started seeing flares beginning to pop. That's because these regions are beginning to rotate into Earth view. And you start seeing these things pop and get bigger and bigger. And there, late on the 18th, we see a C-class flare. That was the one that launched a big solar storm that wasn't Earth directed, but that probably was an M class flare. You just couldn't tell because the Earth's limb was in the way. Well, now these things are beginning to rotate into Earth view. There's no more occulting, as we call it. So now we have a real possibility for M flares, which means radio blackouts to you amateur radio operators. And this risk could continue easily for the next two weeks. Switching to our solar storm conditions, you can see we've been pretty quiet for about the past two weeks or so. There's just not been a lot going on. Until about the 19th when we hit the fast wind from that coronal hole, it's not given us very much activity, just a little bit of aurora sprinkling here and there. And things might continue like that for maybe the next day or so. We might bump up to storm levels again. It's kind of hard to tell, but probably not too much and not for too long. Then things will quiet back down, and then we'll have to wait for at least four more days before the next coronal hole rotates into Earth strike zone and we get yet more fast wind. Switching to your solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are in the middle of that high speed stream which really isn't all that high speed so we're only getting a sprinkling of aurora. At high latitudes, NOAA is expecting active conditions with about a 50% chance for a major storm. At mid latitudes, we're only expecting unsettled conditions with about a 25% chance of a minor storm. And this should continue for the next day or two. Then things will calm down. And then over the weekend, sorry for you amateur radio operators who may be do doing contesting, that's when that second coronal hole will rotate into the Earth strike zone and we expect activity to begin to ramp back up again. Switching to our solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, we do have those M flare players that are rotating back into Earth view this week. That means that NOAA has raised our M flare risk. We're looking at about 10 to 20 percent uh, chance of an M class flare over the next three days, and that risk will probably rise if, if these things keep firing off the flares that we've been seeing thus far. The positive thing is that what that means is that we've got some decent solar flux for you amateur radio operators, so if you can stand the intermittent radio blackout here and there or a lot of noise on the bands, at least you'll get some decent propagation in the interim. This will last probably through the next couple weeks. So the space weather this week looks very exciting. We have those two coronal holes. One is already in the Earth strike zone and is sending us fast wind, which is giving us kind of a little bit of a roar right now. We have that second coronal hole that will be sending us some fast wind in a few days. And then on top of that, we have those two M flare player regions that have survived their backside transit and they are back again and they're still angry. They're still firing off flares and solar storms. So you amateur radio operators, over the next couple weeks, you're just going to have to ride it out. It's not going to be a super fun passage for you. But you aurora photographers should be loving life. Uh, if you don't get any aurora photography done in the next day or two, just wait a couple days and you'll get many more chances for some solar storming. I'm Tamitha Scove. Thank you for watching.